My name's Kerry. I'm Welsh. I've taught mainly teens and adults and in state schools and in private language schools, in large classes and in smaller classes. That's really what, who I feel I am more than anything else is a classroom teacher. But then I've also been lucky to be able to apply that in uh, course book materials. This is the topic of the session and um, it's going to be all about questions and we're going to be questioning two things or we're going to be exploring questions actually we're going to be exploring questions about the term 21st century skills and then we're going to be exploring how questions can help us possibly to explore those skills okay so there's going to be kind of two things first of all thinking about the term itself and then applying that directly into teaching and learning. Okay, questions we might want to ask. I'm actually going to frame the beginning of the session with four questions that I want to ask. So that's quite selfish of me. Though these are my questions that you're going to have to um, discuss for a large extent. But you've probably got questions as well. So this is my first question. Where's all this fuss coming from, do you think? It's really difficult actually to answer why fully if we don't answer a question that you were asking over there, which is the next, oh well sorry, we'll come to the answers, which is the question of what, yeah? But we're gonna come on to what are those skills. First here are a couple of answers. Today because of rapid economic and social change, schools have to prepare students for jobs that have not yet been created technologies that have not yet been invented, and problems that we don't yet know will arise. This comes from the OECD. Okay, that's one answer. The basic idea is that students who will come of age in the 21st century need to be taught different skills than those learned by students in the 20th century, and that the skills they learn should reflect the specific demands that will be placed upon them in a complex, competitive, knowledge-based, information age, technology-driven economy and society. And the Glossary of Education Reform is an American organization which is particularly interested in and has a website which shares a lot of information about this whole idea of 21st century skills. Where are these people coming from? What are they most interested in? in the answers that they give to this question. What key words can you see? Or which, which ones, yeah. So there's economy, is something that's very much in the economic necessities. Okay, solving problems. So I think this is, again, is probably a wider. So you've got the economy, jobs, work, but then this wider idea of solving problems. Okay, it's coming from out, outside. It's kind of being, it's a bit, top down or it's a bit kind of this um, for me it smacks a little bit of we must shape a workforce um, it, it seems to me a little bit that the emphasis is on creating a workforce and that makes me a little bit uncomfortable with it but then there is this other side there is also social and the problem solving and the problem solving that goes beyond work so there's there's tension in any answer to these questions Okay, so that was um, question number one. Question number two. What are 21st century skills? The first answer is the non-answer, okay? Um, which, which I think is hugely useful. That's the non-answer, okay? What I, well, we don't really know. <laughs> Could be anything. Then you get this kind of answer, which I really don't expect anyone to read. The long answer. <laughs> and this is just the beginning of the long answer, okay? It's going and on and on and on. Again, whoa, useful. Well, who knows? Depends on you what kind of answers you like. Or the last, possibly the most common answer, the four C's. Now, this is definitely just taking a core of the long answer. But my question to you is, what are the four C's? Can you remember? Do you know? Can you share? This is another American organization. I don't know if you know the Partnership for 21st Century Learning. There's a, a slide at the end with references 
um, to these websites and organizations which um, share a lot of information, very long answers to the question. We're going to kind of explore that a little bit further. Are these skills really 21st century skills? Okay, I think this is generally accepted as the answer. Creativity, critical thinking, communication, collaboration, not so new. Basically summing it up, 21st century skills then are not new. So these are the questions that we face and we have to ask and, and I think there is no yes, no answer here. So we move on to my digression. Um, we're going to do a little bit of time traveling. Uh, but first of all, I'd like you to have a look at a list and answer these questions. So I'm going to show you a list and you have to tell me what are they, which do you use, and how long have you been using them? Okay, so then I'm going to put the list up, turn to a partner, and answer those questions. So what have we got here? What is the list? Okay, so the means of interacting remotely through the internet, or their stuff we use on our phones, possibly. They're like a, a kind of a photo at the moment of stuff that most people are using. Let's say people who have smartphones, people who have easy access to Wi-Fi. These are the um, 21st century ICT tools. But we're going to travel in time, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to go back. I was going to go back five years, but I decided to go back six because then the numbers are nice and kind of so. So we're actually, you know, almost a fifth of the way through the 21st century. And we're still kind of harking on about 21st century skills. I wonder whether we should give them a different name. But we're going to go back and see. The question for you is this. How many of these were around six years ago? Here's the answer. Okay, and we're going to go back another five years. How many of these were around in 2005? How many of these were around in the year 2000? Any guesses? Zero, one, three? Google was the answer. I actually have them all, the dates all written down in my notebook if you want to ask later about when each one was launched. But, so, you know, 21st century, we've traveled 16 years into it and things are constantly changing. So we've got this <coughs> rapid change thing, but it's kind of quite difficult to, to pin it down and to say exactly. So that is why it's also difficult. This label of 21st century skills may be a little slippery for us. But what does it, does this show us anything at all? This little journey in time? Rapid changes, yeah? So we're gonna go back to the question of, in this world of rapid changes, of digital tools, of communication in new channels, the channels are changing all the time, that short answer about the 21st century skills, four C's, is it enough? So I think there's an argument for a four C's plus. And what's this plus? What exactly does the plus involve? Um, and I think it's to do with the digital tools. And I'm going to share this um, chart. I don't know if you've seen this. It comes from Nikki Hockley, Gavin Dudney, and Mark Pegram's book on digital literacies, where they break down the skills that are required to be able to function well within those digital tools. If you, we could say they've always been around, potentially, but what we can add to that, maybe the added value, is to also have a focus on what are called digital literacies, becoming literate users of digital communication and tools. And I think this is where synthesis often comes in with this idea of so much information out there and what do we do with it? I, I think we've always had this synthesizing, you know, I don't know, I was at university in the 80s where I had to go to a library and get my information from books, but I still had to get 
information from lots of different books and synthesize them down into a 2,000 word essay. So I don't think that's necessarily a new skill, but I think there's a new twist on, on that skill. So we're moving on to question four now. Uh, we've looked at what they are. We've looked at why people might think they're important. And now it's like, well, so how do we do this? How do we actually put this into practice? I think there is another question here that I'm not at the moment going to address is the do we want to or should we? There's a huge debate there which I'm quite happy to come back to at the end because there is this question of how, where, when, who teaches these skills, learns these skills. But for the moment, let's just have a look at how as classroom teachers or materials developers, we can target these skills. And I have an answer, which won't surprise you. And um, Sue mentioned it a couple of times in her session earlier. And the answer is questions. Okay, so we're going to look at how teacher questions, student questions, what kind of questions can be used to target these skills? First of all, as teachers in class, what kind of questions do we ask our students? We obviously use a whole range of different questions, and all question types probably have their function in the appropriate moment, place, time, but I have to confess to what I think are fairly useless questions that I sometimes ask in class. And I still do. I still catch myself going the, okay, you understand? Uh, well, you know, that's, they go, yeah. you don't know if they understand or not. So that's one of my kind of slightly useless questions. There are de better questions that can be asked or a straightforward yes, no. So uh, do you like, I don't know, do you like Breaking Bad? And you get, yeah. <laughs> It's begging a follow-up question. So that's kind of one of the, probably a fault in materials writing sometimes is to not think through exactly how generative your question is going to be. But I think when we're thinking about targeting these skills of creativity, critical thinking, especially we need to be careful with the questions that we're asking. So the second question about questions what kind of questions should we be asking? Rather than an answer, uh, we're going to explore some possible questions. Okay, we're going to, and so I'm going to ask you to bear with me and to put yourself into student mode. Okay, and um, we're going to do a couple of tasks. First of all, just look at the photo and think about these questions. What time of day is it, do you think? And what time of year? Okay, share your answers with a partner. Okay, so what time of day? Morning, you're going afternoon, okay. Why are you going afternoon? The shadows, okay. What is it about the shadows that make them afternoon shadows? Okay, the sun's at an angle, right? Um, we've got morning, we've got quite a few people thought it was morning. Why morning? That's like hazy, because the shadows are shorter. Okay, the shadows are shorter. Would that make it early morning or late morning? <laughs> Let's not put a time on it. You're right, it's morning. I'll give you it's morning and it's also kind of mid to late morning. Time of year? Late summer, autumn, spring. spring. No one's saying winter here. I see this is not a winter scene for you, okay? So why autumn? There are some fallen leaves, yeah. Okay, why spring? The, the sun isn't too intense, okay, okay. We had summer as well. Was it late summer? Late not summer. enough leaves for autumn. <laughs> okay, not enough leaves for autumn yet. Well, you've got it 
it's late summer, yeah. So this was a mid-morning, late summer in Spain. So the quality of the light is kind of slightly different and whatever. When I use this photo with my students, I ask them where I took it, and they know exactly where I took it because it's a square that's very popular. It's the only one that has these black and white tiles on the floor. They, they know it. They're intimate with it. That's not what I'm going to ask you. What I'm going to ask you is, can you assume the position of the person who took this photo? And you have to move to do this. Can you please move into the position that you think the person who took this photo was in when they took the photo. Now, what I'd like you to imagine is that rather than taking the photo like that, um, the photo was taken like that. What would you see? Okay, so if you, rather than taking the photo like this, you took the photo like this, just take a few seconds to imagine what that photo would look like. Okay, I guess you've captured an image in your mind. My next questions for you would be things like, are there any people in the photo? Um, what's happening in the photo? Uh, what are the people doing? Ask you questions, which are actually fairly straightforward. We could call them kind of lower order thinking skill type questions about the image that's in your head. But these are questions that if I gave you the image and the answers were in the image, would be de very different from asking you the questions when you're building your own image. So we're taking what are quite simple questions, but applying them to the image which is being built up in the student's mind. So here we're using fairly simple questions to move towards something which is creative in the sense that the students are creating an image in their mind. Would you agree here that the that we're moving towards possibly developing that skill through questions, okay? We're gonna I'm gonna show you a completely different photo. And we're gonna switch skills. So, where was the photo taken? Who took it? Why did they take it? And where was it shared? It's a very recent photo. To understand this photo, you actually need a lot of information beforehand so you need to know who these people are, where they are, what the occasion is. Yeah? Um, who took it? Well, it's just a press photographer. But what, what makes this image an interesting image for the press? Why this one? Yeah? Mm, there's lots there to explore about. What is it showing about Hillary Clinton? Why this particular feature of the presidential candidate? And there's lots of questions here to, about what exactly is going on. Then there's where it was shared and how it was shared is interesting as well. And we're kind of looking more into the digital literacies of remixing. So we can use images for critical thinking just in the way we can for creative. Do you know about this resource, the Learning Network, the New York Times? They share an image. A week later, they tell you what it was. But in the meantime, there's a moderated conversation online uh, where people discuss and analyze the photos. It's a fantastic resource. OK, I have to move on. Um, I only have, I've, I, have I run out of time? Yeah? OK. So the information literacy digital awareness would be moving further down that line of the Hillary Clinton photo, the Donald Trump photo, what's going on here, well, how are we using digital tools. So if you want to know about those, you can ask me later. And we'll skip this task. And any more questions that you might have had at the beginning, feel free to bring them up over coffee later. <laughs> Thank you.